How does Siri come to that response? Or was it some smartness behind it? Hello, I'm Svetlana Hoon. I'm originally from Belarus. I work in this area, conversational artificial intelligence, with chatbots, with uh, propaganda analysis, with social robots and large language models. And I enjoy wow. it very much. Tell us about your very first phone. <laughs> well, my very first phone, that was actually our landline in my hometown in Vitebsk. And we got it installed as I was already like 18 or 19. That was an incredible event. We're really celebrated <laughs> to be connected. And today, are you team Android or team Apple? Private choice, team Apple, definitely. But sometimes I have to work with Android because my employers want that. <laughs> As a researcher in conversational AI, do you have any AI app you would recommend? I would recommend to be very critical about all of them. Apps like ChatGPT and similar, of course, help to get some tasks done more efficiently. You need to use them very consciously and critically, but they can improve your productivity. Nowadays, AI is fully integrated into our smartphones. Do you see your phone as your personal assistant? I do see my smartphone as my personal assistant. It started uh, being my personal assistant many years ago already with like one of the first versions of iPhone. It's my productivity assistant with all the calendars and maps and emails and messaging. I can't imagine my life without this personal assistant. It makes many, many things more efficient and convenient. I feel more independent with this assistant, but that's not because of AI. <laughs> In 10 years, what do you think our conversations with smartphones will look like? I think it will be more app-less. AI can replace all those different apps. It will feel more integrated, unified experience. However, it can be also a negative experience because it will be less diverse. Maybe there will be less competition. And because of that, the quality can drop. I think AI can help us to get rid of apps. If we gave you a tech magic wand, what kind of generative AI would you create? <laughs> With the generative AI as we have it now, we can easily make a robot say something. So we don't have to spend five years and 20 million euro on creating a machine that is able to say at least something. Now it's easy. But it doesn't mean that we kind of solved conversation. We just came a little bit closer to a technology that helps us understand the whole complexity of conversation. So there is still a long way to go to make generative AI or conversational AI really close to human language level with all these ways of regulation of social proximity, intimacy or distance, power relationships, membership of groups, for example, like identity construction in interaction. That's more complex than just, you know, ChatGPT. ChatGPT is next token prediction. So if I had the magic, I would make a generative AI that first really understands language, not just predicts the next token. Second, also understands all this relationship management and power management complexity. But for that, I think ourselves, researchers, have to understand it first. There is a lot of talk about AI's impact on human creativity. In your opinion, what are the main ethical challenges in developing AI? First, what is creativity? It's based on experiences, perceptions, on what we have seen before, what we have when we train an, an AI model. It's, it's kind of similar. We give that model a lot of input and based on that input, it will produce something else, but it will not have that personal perception of those experiences. It will not reflect through the lens of those personal perceptions on the input. It will just learn some patterns. Creativity is our enrichment experience. It's for us. It's to make us happy. It's not just to produce something that is boring. So I would prefer to have an AI that solves stuff for me that I hate instead of replacing me in the part that I love. And then the ethical challenges, inclusion, diversity, like autistic people, people with some physical disabilities, blind, deaf people, they are still excluded with AI. This imbalance of power is even reinforced with AI. 
Share a funny story. Has an AI ever surprised you with an unexpected response? <laughs> it was actually yesterday. My children were making jokes with Siri. They wanted Siri to tell jokes all the time. At some point, my son started asking Siri to tell an adult joke from the 80s. And Siri, instead of telling a joke, uh, said, where are you actually now? <laughs> How does Siri come to that response? Was it like a misunderstanding, misinterpretation of the input, or was it some smartness behind it? Now we create a technology that is kind of general and is supposed to support us in solving our problems. I'm very much in favor of going the opposite way, that you start with a problem, start with understanding the benefits of artificial intelligence in that situation, in that context, define very specific context-specific, use-case-specific, quality criteria, and then you develop AI from the human that benefits from it and not just top-down.